uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. Anyway, welcome, welcome everybody to the Petersonian with Dr. Peter Stein. Yes, I'm back giving you some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful information regarding the electrolysis of water. We're here today to show to you that the electrolysis of water claim made by science is actually wrong. Yes, you've got it. It's actually bullshit. <laughs> Who'd have believed, really, that water isn't made of hydrogen <laughs> and oxygen? <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful, isn't it, to actually think that water is just water and it's not made of hydrogen and oxygen. And we're going to put forward now a little test that you can do yourselves at home to prove to yourselves that water isn't made of hydrogen and oxygen. <laughs> anyway, let's get on. Now, there's lots and lots of different sources online, independent sources that will tell you water is made of hydrogen and oxygen. H2O, this is its chemical symbol, allegedly. And if we go on to the one, oh, sorry, one of the ways in which they've determined that water is hydrogen and oxygen is through the process of electrolysis. Now, electrolysis is a very simple uh, chemical uh, or a setup that um, enables gases to be collected, substances to be changed when uh, a substance is, has a direct current passed through it. So essentially, if we, we, if we refer to our water, the electrolysis of water is the decomposition of water into its constituent parts of oxygen and hydrogen when uh, an, a, a direct current is passed through the water. OK, so you've got your anode, you've got your cathode, which are wired up to a battery and the, the, the voltage, the current, as we see here, this is here a simple setup for demonstration of electrolysis at home. So if you want to do this at home, feel free. I'm not going to stop you at all. <laughs> Wired up to a battery, the, uh, the electrical current passes through, flows from the anode to the cathode, as far as I'm aware. Okay, through the water. Okay, and what they're saying is that the water uh, separates into hydrogen and oxygen, simply because you get the gases hydrogen and oxygen coming off from the um, different anode and cathode respectively. But this is the but. You always need to add an electrolyte to the water in order for this to occur. <laughs> Can you believe it? We can't just use water alone. <laughs> oh no, get away, no. We have to add something to the water in order for us to get, collect the gas products. So whether it's hydrogen, oxygen, even chlorine. We've got to add an electrolyte to the water in order to get those gas products. Now, this is the interesting part. We've also found somewhere on online, it's the, um, it's the US Energy Department's uh, little thing about, uh, there we go, little electrolysis of water, there we go. And it's all, it's basically aimed at teachers. So if I'm a teacher, well, I'm a doctor. My name's Dr. P Peter Stein, I am, so I'm, I do have the credentials to be doing this. So, but if this is, if you, we have a school setting and we want to show to children that oxygen and hydrogen can be garnered from water, from the electrolysis of water, it says here, we can carry out this simple experiment here. Now, this is the key. This is the key because anybody can do this at home. And this is the proof that you need to convince yourself that water is not made of hydrogen and oxygen. OK, let's read out. OK, let's read out. Electrolysis of water, it says. Student objective. 
uh, the student will be able to explain how hydrogen can be extracted from water. <laughs> can you believe that water? So it makes you think that the hydrogen's in the water, H2O, of course, yes. Um, the student will also be able to explain how energy flows through the electrolysis system. How the how the power and uh, interaction between the ions ions and cations etc etc of course now the materials we'll need in this uh, uh little simple classroom demonstration is a, a a battery there we go we've got a nine volt battery there um, what else a piece of aluminium foil now we've got two pieces of aluminium foil here they're just wrapped up you know crunched up and uh, what else have we got we've got some salt here we go we've got salt here doesn't state what kind of salt it is it just says salt so we've got salt here and it says some electrical wires with alligator clips we don't need those uh, a beaker there we go we've got a small beaker there okay to put our pour our water in uh, a stirring rod or spoon there we go and a graduate cylinder don't need that and a science journal what do we want a science journal for <laughs> seems like bollocks to me Anyway, and we want some water, of course. Now we've got, we're using tap water at the moment, okay? Now it's wonderful. Now, background information, are you listening? Are you listening? Here we go. When you add salt to the water, the salt ions, which are highly polar, help pull the water molecules apart into ions. Each part of the water molecule, H2O, <laughs> has a charge. The OH, the hydroxyl ion, is negative, and the hydrogen plus ion is positive. This solution in water forms an, an, an electrolyte, allowing current to flow when a voltage is applied. The H plus ions, called cations, move toward the cathode, uh, the negative electrode, and the OH ions, called anions, move toward the anode, positive electrode. But we've got to ask ourselves, what happens to the salt charge? Oh yes, what happens to the salt? What happens to that? How, if, what effect does it have on the electrolytic process they don't mention that here do they that's another question though but let's get back um the, so once we've done this and we set this up it carries on bubbles of oxygen gas o2 form at the anode and bubbles of hydrogen gas form at the cathode the bubbles are easily seen twice as much hydrogen gas is produced as oxygen the net reaction is this one here 2h2o plus 2H2 gives you plus O2. Okay, yes, you can do this wherever you like. So pr procedure prior to class, make up one, one set of experimental apparatus that the student may use as a model during their experiments. There we go, that's one. What else can we do? We've got, uh, so this is the procedure during class. Read the following passage to the students. This passage also appears on the student science journal. On the science journal, recommend doing this for some during uh, duration to ensure confirmation of gas. Absolutely. Um, um, so the electrolysis is a technique. This is what I'll be I'll be telling to my students or you, the viewer, who are going to carry out this this experiment to know for yourself that oxygen and hydrogen are not in water. Here we go. Electrolysis is a technique used by scientists, science right people like me. <laughs> Um, to separate a compound or molecule into its component parts by adding electricity to water and providing a, a a path that's the one for the different particles to follow the water can be separated into hydrogen and oxygen there we go they're actually telling you that water can be split into hydrogen and oxygen in this experiment you will be taking a sample of salt water there we go there's our salt salt water and add a flow of electricity to it the electrolysis you will see the hydrogen and oxygen bubbling up. Divide the students into lab groups of three to four students per group. Give the students an overview of what they will be doing. Then break it down into smaller steps. Explain each procedure and have the groups work simultaneously. The students will blah, 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 blah. So we know what we're going to do. Okay, they're telling you here in this information, okay, that you can split the water. Split the water using salt. Using salt. Okay. I think it was. Um, let me just have a little look here. Yeah, salt water. Doesn't state what what kind of salt it is. Just says salt water, and you can split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. So this is what we're going to do, and this is what we certainly recommend you should do at home because it will prove to you that water is not made of hydrogen and oxygen. Okay, are we ready? <coughs> Let's go.
Okay, now, here we go. Now we've got our cart, there's our jar. There we go, we're gonna pop in some some tap water. We've mentioned that before. There's the tap water, got loads of it in there. Now, this is, this is, this is some salt. Okay, this salt. So we're following the instructions, aren't we? Yes, absolutely, of course. Now, here we go, we're gonna mix this into the, we're gonna mix loads of this into the, there we go, so we've got quite a fair amount. There we go, that should do it. It's lovely, it's like being, being chef, isn't it, eh? There we go, isn't it lovely? There we go, now look, now that is our salt solution. Now we'll get our battery. Now, if anyone wants to know the difference between the anode and the cathode, the cathode comes from the negative terminal of the battery and the anode goes comes from the positive terminal on the battery. Okay, so we're gonna crunch this up. We're gonna hold these here, like this. There we go. Try and see that they don't mix. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift these up and then pop them in the water. And then my, my assistant will move the camera and we can hopefully see those bubbles coming off. There we go, can we see? Can we see those bubbles coming off? There we go, can we get a closer look? There we go. Oh look, we can see those bubbles very clearly, can't we? Now what they're telling you, they're telling you that you are getting the hydrogen and the oxygen, you're splitting those gases or those components of the water by using this method. Okay, so you've got on the right hand side, you've got the hydrogen and on the left hand side, you've got the, you've got the oxygen according to the information we've seen. Now here is the here is the here is the good part. Here is the good part for everyone to do to be able to show to themselves to prove to themselves that water is not made of hydrogen and oxygen. Are you ready? All you have to do, all you have to do, all you have to do is carry out exactly the same thing as what I've done using sea salt or common table salt, okay, sodium chloride. And all you need to do is see if you can garner oxygen from it. Okay, this is the test. This is the demonstration you can do to prove to yourself that water is not hydrogen and oxygen. They're telling you in, in these papers, they're telling you in these papers that it is possible. It is possible. Go on the Wikipedia page online. They're telling you it's possible you're just using a salt. Okay? Okay. So your demonstration to convince yourself 100% beyond any doubt whatsoever that water is not made of hydrogen and oxygen. Just use sea salt, table salt, common, um, common table salt, sodium chloride in solution, which is a salt in solution, and see if you can garner the harvest from the anode oxygen okay we are aware that some people have said that it takes an awful long time so keep at it keep at it keep as keep at it as long as you possibly can collect those gases be careful the electrodes may um, they may uh, fall apart you may have to change them quite considerably but carry on doing it persevere persevere and I will guarantee you that you will never ever get any oxygen from the electrolysis of sodium chloride, common salt or sea salt. You will never, because the oxygen simply isn't there. Okay? Now that proves to me, that would prove to me, or anybody, 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 that wa water is not made of hydrogen and oxygen. The gases come from the, they're coming from here. This is the material where those gas products are coming from, not coming from the water. We're beginning to realize that water is not hydrogen and oxygen. It is not H2O. Water is simply water. Water doesn't conduct electricity. I'm looking down at that. What we see in the bubbles, what, what blah, blah, I can't read that number two. What's number, in this setup, we only see bubbles. Absolute one point to remember. And that is when we, if we replay the, the video, the bubbles we're seeing. Now, because they're telling you that it's oxygen and hydrogen bubbles. But the thing is, they don't get people, they don't get the students to test for what those bubbles are because one of the bubbles on the anode will be chlorine be chlorine gas it will not be oxygen okay test it yourself gather those bubbles go sorry gather the bus the bus gather the gather the gas the gas gather the gas i've got it gather the gas the gas 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 
gather, harvest the gas from the anode. Okay, do it lo lots and lots and lots of times. You will always get chlorine. Test it for yourself. Get a colored piece of paper, wet it, damp it, open up the jar, just hold it in there. If it bleaches, you know you've got chlorine gas. You haven't got the presence of oxygen. You will always get chlorine gas when you electrolyze salt. Always, always get that. You will always get that. Sodium chloride, salt, you will always get chlorine off at the anode and hydrogen off at the cathode. So to summarize, so to summarize, everybody, here we go. The information here is wrong. It is wrong. It is a trick to deceive people into thinking that hydrogen and oxygen are contained in water, that the products of the electrolysis process, okay, come from the water. Whereas well, that's not correct at all. They come from the products we put in. They come from the electrolytes. Okay. That's number one. Water doesn't also conduct electricity. Okay. It's the, this, the electrolyte in, the, in solution that conducts the electricity. Okay. Even if we were to melt this down, it would conduct electricity. It just doesn't conduct in its solid form. Okay. But we put it in solution, it will start conducting that, that uh, electricity. Okay. So the gases, obviously, as I've said, they come from the impurities in the water. It's only the impurities in water that will conduct electricity. Okay, We add an electrolyte to it, we could call that electrolyte an, an impurity, which will conduct the electricity. It's so simple to understand, people. Okay, Water is not H2O. Water is simply water. <laughs> anyway, thanks ever so much, and... Uh, We'll see you later. Bye. The Earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe. It's flat, everywhere it's flat.